Good afternoon, I am William Theo, and this is PTV News Now. Friends and the entire European Union are unclear on a collective anti-war and anti-Russian invasion stance on the ongoing war in Ukraine. On Monday, France's top diplomat, Foreign Minister Stefan Sejourney, who is in a visit to China, told his counterpart in a press briefing in Beijing, China must send a clear message to Vladimir Putin and the Russians of its genuine desire to end the raging war in Ukraine, much like its sentiment for a ceasefire and permanent end to hostilities in the rubble city of Gaza. France is one with the European Union in its belief there will be no stability and peace in European continent and beyond should Russia's efforts to annex Ukraine or parts of it extend indefinitely into the future. But then Paris's engagements with Beijing in the last year show its desire to improve relations and deviate from the European Union seeking to wean itself from its reliance on China. This economic policy dubbed de-risking was a byproduct from the pandemic era and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. De-risking is a saner and safer approach as opposed to the policy of decoupling espoused by a number of lawmakers and policymakers in the United States which seek to isolate China and cut commercial ties with her. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is one of the most hated men on the planet alongside Vladimir Putin. Unsurprisingly, much animus has spread among his countrymen in the Holy Land. This as tens of thousands of demonstrators and protesters across Israel took to the streets in Tel Aviv, Haifa, Beersheba, Caesarea and Jerusalem over the weekend to join the families of hostages against the Netanyahu government to demand the release of hostages still in Hamas's captivity. These protests have been marred with civilian and police clashes and the protesters causing civil disturbance on the streets. The demonstrators and protesters are all fed up with Netanyahu's apathy and lack of compassion in not trying hard at all to secure the release of the hostages. Rather, Netanyahu is hell-bent in crushing and annihilating Hamas, which still has the leverage of having scores of hostages in their hands. As such, these Israeli demonstrators and the families of the hostages all want Netanyahu to step down from office and let more practical and peaceful heads to take over. As Christmas all around the world to include 1.36 billion Catholics celebrated Easter Sunday on Hail and Dwell on Jesus Christ's triumph over death, Pope Francis called for an immediate ceasefire between Israel and Hamas in Gaza, even as Israeli defense forces continue to block aid coming in from all over the world, leaving more than a million of uh, mostly children and women on the brink of famine. Easter Sunday in Vatican City. Before a packed crowd at St. Peter's Square filled with flowers, Pope Francis delivered a message calling for peace in Gaza. I appeal once again that access to humanitarian aid be ensured in Gaza and call once more for the prompt release of the hostages seized on October 7th and for an immediate ceasefire in the Strip. Let us not allow the current hostilities to continue to have grave repercussions on the civil population and above all the children. Calls for aid to Gaza have recently taken shape as a convoy of ships left a port in Cyprus Saturday carrying some 400 tons of food and other relief supplies. World Central Kitchen says the crafts carried ready-to-eat staples like rice, pasta, flour, canned vegetables and proteins, enough to prepare more than one million meals. The United Nations warns that famine could strike northern Gaza as early as this month. The United States military, along with regional partners, continues delivering relief in the form of airdropped pallets filled with food and water. But the deliveries can be spotty at times without any organized distribution method on land. Israel declared war on Hamas following an October 7th surprise attack by the militant group in which it killed 1,200 and kidnapped more than 250. Israel has since placed a stranglehold on the entire region, pummeling civilian infrastructure and restricting the flow of aid. Health officials in Gaza say more than 32,000 Palestinians have been killed. The United Nations International Court of Justice issued two provisional measures in a case brought by South Africa accusing Israel of genocide, a charge Israel flatly denies. 
But for many Israelis, an ongoing war isn't the answer as they took to the streets demanding their government sign a ceasefire agreement with Hamas in exchange for hostages still held by the group Western powers identify as a terror organization. On Sunday at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, widely considered the most holy site in Christianity, the Archbishop held Easter Mass in a church emptier than years past, as since October 7th, Palestinian worshippers need special permission to cross checkpoints into Jerusalem. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News. And that's a wrap for this afternoon. This is William Theo reminding you to stay informed, get ahead, and catch the news right here.